All right, folks, hey, uh, I wanted to welcome my man, Intellect, based out of Ohio, for joining us today on this session's Off the Grid podcast. Hey, brother, thank you for joining us today. I'm very excited to talk about your story and just all the cool things you're up to today. Man, 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 appreciate you, bro, man. Thanks for having me come on. I'm, I'm really excited, man. We've been talking online forever, man. Yeah. So it was, this was bound to happen, man. I uh, just appreciate you, bro. Uh, so I'm, I'm just excited to dig into this. Yeah, most definitely. Hey, man, can we just uh, start with an introduction of your background, any crews that you represent, and just tell us how long you've been making music? Yeah, so my background, man, you know, I'm originally from Toledo, Ohio, you know, it's Northwest Ohio. Currently, I live in Sandusky, Ohio, which is just right on Lake Erie, um, not too far from Cleveland, probably about 45 minutes west of Cleveland. Been living in this area for about 10 years, um, you know, smaller community, uh, smaller town. Um, started off in hip hop really around the age of 16 with a group of friends of mine who just started, you know, rapping. It was really kind of a part of, uh, you know, a, a church talent show actually. But I had always kind of written raps here and there, but I, you know, I never had any idea of, of doing music. It was just like, I loved hip hop. You know, I grew yep. up around hip hop. You know, my older brother, cousins, I mean, they're much older than me. So I was exposed to a lot of the early stuff. You're talking about like, run dmc and dougie yeah. fresh and and all that old you know what i'm saying the, the stuff in the, the mid 80s that's right we were listening to that stuff on vinyl so my experience <laughs> with hip-hop goes way yeah. way back public enemy albums you know bdp krs1 like i li i was exposed to all that and so you know i loved hip-hop and you know fast forward to when i was 16 and uh, you know, I got connected to a crew, you know, we did a talent show together just because we were asked to do it. And yeah, then it was so well received, we turned in, you know, ourselves into a crew. Okay. And, you know, we were connected to our church and we were doing evangelism and things along those lines. You know, the name of our crew was called Low Profile. Um, <laughs> you know, that group, uh, you know, we split and then, you know, uh, me and another person that was a part of that crew, we formed our own crew called The Remnant. And around that time when him and I were working together, I was I started to venture off into production because yeah. I wanted to learn and we needed music. And and then I, I delved into production, ended up getting into engineering, just really self-taught, did a lot of reading, yeah. uh, a lot of studying, a lot of trial and error. <laughs> and, uh, you know, fast forward to where I'm right now, uh, you know, I started Polished Arrow Music just as a Thing by myself uh, in 2016, just because I had, you know, never really what I would call officially released music for people uh -huh. to access on platforms until that time. And so that was around, you know, I put out an album called Roots and, you know, I started to learn slash figure out the whole landscape with Spotify and Apple Music and all these yeah. digital platforms, learn about distribution. And, and I started to make connections with other producers because for a while there, I was self-producing my own music. That's right. And so, you know, fast forward to where I am now, you know, Polished Arrow Music has turned into a collective where there's about six of us um, together. Yeah. Uh, we're just, uh, you know, unified. Uh, really, it kind of, you know, a couple of guys, Precise and Just James, connected with me last year. Yeah. And then we've just grown and we've expanded. You know, we've added uh, three members this year, uh, Dex, Rich Cologne, and uh, yeah. Caboose. You know, all these guys are just fantastic artists. Um, you know, our lane is, you know, for the most part is boom bap style. You know, yeah. we, we're, you know, lyricists. And, and it's just been fun. It's been fun. It's been, you know, uh, a collective effort, you know, kind of, a, you know, family atmosphere. We support each other, push each other. Yeah. So it's exciting. No, that's it's dope, man. And uh, <clears throat> for, for that uh, collective that you have, the Paul Sherrill team, are you the only one doing production or this? Like I noticed everybody's got like their own albums or projects out. Uh, is uh, A lot of you guys do production too as well. 
So, and from a production standpoint, I've really kind of put what I do from a production standpoint on the back burner. Okay. I don't really hardly produce anymore. Yeah. I've come to find out that as an artist, it's just been better to work with other producers because I've yep. found that producers, uh, they tend to bring out different aspects of me as an art, you know, as an artist than That's a good point. I was being able to pull out myself. So it was, I was able, I guess I would explain it this way. I, as an artist, got in a rut because I was self-producing. Yep, I can see that. I, you know, because it's like, hey, I'm making these beats and, you know, yeah, this is my lane and this is what I like. But as a producer, you tend to have, you can be stagnant. You can have tendencies yeah. where it doesn't push the boundaries. You know, you have your own thought process and it kind of limits you sonically as an artist. And so I started to really, in 2016, that's when I really started to branch out. And I was producing a little bit here and there. Okay. But I was really just kind of kind of tucking some of that stuff away. Yeah. And I've gotten to it now where it's just like I just want to work with other producers because I found out for me that it's just it's been um it's been better for me as an artist to just focus <clears throat> on being an artist that just writes raps, you know, and, and puts together albums instead of just focusing, like having a divided attention, divided focus when it comes to production yep. and, and you know, and I'm rapping. Like, I'm, I, I feel like I'm so much better as, as a lyricist yep. that I can just stay in that lane and I'm good. I mean, do I like production? I love production. It's yep. fun, but this is my lane and I need yep. to, you know, at least for me personally, I want to stick in that lane because you know, this is where I've I found a groove and and where people have been able to connect with me a lot better. And I, you know, I'll be the first one to admit a lot of the guys that I've worked with as producers. I mean, they're they're better than me as a producer. So you know, I want to go with what's best. You know, yeah. not to say that you know what I did was not good, but yeah. I know that these guys are fantastic, and so yeah. uh, they've been able to to really take me to the next level. And so that's that's where I want to be. It's funny you mentioned that because uh, on my notes, I, I was like, as I was listening to your albums, I was like, man, intellect knows how to pick beats, man. Like, uh, I was like, he's a good, yeah, yeah. that's, that, that's a, I, I think, a quite difficult thing sometimes. But um, just, you know, finding a pool of beats and then being able to pick the ones that make the album. And so, I, I yeah, when I, as I was going through all your albums, I was like, dude, he, I, I love your beat selection, man. They're always hard. So whoever you, Whoever you're going with, man, I agree with you. Stick with them. It's super dope. Yeah. Yeah. There's a couple of guys that I, that I, you know, just hit up, uh, you know, Broken Finger. He's, he's out yep. of Russia. Uh, yeah. Oh, wow. Plus. He's out, he's out of Brazil. Um, and then there's a couple other guys in the States, man, that I've, that I've grabbed some beats from. There's a guy out of the UK, Quincy Tones, who I'm sitting on some beats from him. <laughs> uh, you know, so, I mean, it's, it's, it's so yeah. It's so dope because hip hop is so global. Yeah, and I've been able to connect with these guys. Well, hey man, yep, I, I agree, man. Hip hop is uh, definitely global, man, and uh, I just love that. You know, when you uh, when you get like a pack of beats from uh, all over the world, it's interesting to see just uh, kind of the flavor they bring into uh, the music that you make. And so with that, like when you were growing up, you mentioned a lot of the uh, '80s greats, and so as you kind of furthered your journey into music making. Who were the uh, rappers or producers that you were paying attention to? Who who were like your favorites and just kind of anticipating their releases as you were growing up? Man, KRS One, like BDP was Woo! was huge for me because yes, like what what set what set him apart from from a lot of the other lyricists of the time was like I felt like there was a lot like there was a lot of thought provoking, uh, you know, words, knowledge that he was kind of communicating in his raps. And so like, I, I, I love the fact that it was more than just surface type of, you know, things that he was going into. Okay. And so, you know, I, just his lyrical style overall, the fact yep. that like, man, 
you could just like song after song, he'd body the beat. And so <laughs> I always, always yep. loved his attack and his approach at writing. And so I just, I, I, I always like he's as far as MCs, pure hip hop MCs, he's like definitely at the top for me, you know, one of the best. Um, I would also say Wu Tang is a huge influence too. All day. Um, like Wu Tang was, I remember I was exposed to Wu Tang. I actually saw the first, I don't, I don't know if you know, but there's two Method Man videos. Like there's the older one and then they redid, you know, a, a second one. Either way, I was exposed to it. You know, like I heard the first, you know, that Method Man on the video. And then I was like, dude, I gotta go check out their their music. And yeah. so I bought, I bought, you know, uh 36 chambers. Okay. And I was like, dude, everybody on this crew can rap. Disgusting. And then, to go. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> and then and then it was just like they proceeded, it was like Meth's album, and then yep. you know, Raekwon's and then yeah. Ghostface. And yeah, and I I liked I liked that that whole element of of how they were able to to form a really dope collective and yeah. then it all felt like it was really knit together like like even though you were listening to a a method man album there was still this element of wu-tang because yep. you know you had the other mcs on it and then ghostface album it was like this feels like wu-tang Okay. Ghostface is the primary artist, but there is this, you know, there is this, this, uh, this synergy that I really, really just kind of fell in love with, That's with, right. with that, with that crew. They were a huge, huge influence on me because like just stylistically, everybody had their own style. Yeah. And so you could appreciate the, you know, Hey, I'm getting, you know, this kind of flip or cadence or, or how they use a metaphor for Method Man. Raekwon's gonna do it different. Yeah. Ghost is just gonna bring another level of emotion to yeah. it. And then, you know, appreciating all the differences of the of the artists. And then I just thought like, like Riz's production was, oh, was next level. Like, he, he was in it, the the name, man, you know. Also, you know, props yeah. to mathematics too, because he was, he was sliding in tracks here and there too. Yeah. In those early days of Woo as well. And yeah. so, you know, I fell in love with, with those guys, you know, me kind of being more in the Christian hip hop lane, there was a group that I was exposed to in the late nineties, early two thousands called the uh, cross movement. Okay. And so they were, I would say they were similar. Those guys were all, you know, most of those guys are from Philadelphia. So heavy <laughs> East coast boom bap influence, um, you know, I would say not not necessarily similar to Wu Tang, but they were a dope, you know, a large crew with different MCs and different styles that blended well together. Like I, I thought that they were they they found a lane early on and they were they were great at it. I think their later stuff for me kind of maybe differentiated from what I loved the most about them early on, but but you know they as far as getting you know listening to music it's like this is good clean music um that's yep. not all about the you know being all wild or whatever yeah they they definitely uh were were a heavy influence on me as well oh man i got two questions from uh both stories that you told me so one who is uh intellect's favorite wu-tang clan member <sighs> <laughs> that's the hardest oh thing. oh, that's oh the hardest. wow i i would I would I would say I would say it's Ghostface. Okay. By a slight <laughs> by a slight margin. Yeah. Over, over over Raekwon. Okay. I think I like Raekwon a little bit more stylistically. All right. As a as a rapper, but as an overall artist, I think Ghost is better. I think that like you know Ghost is has done a better job of putting together albums, you know, um, from, you know, as far as you look at his discography, it's, it's better than Raekwon. Okay. Um, 
without a doubt, without a doubt. Oh man, mine is uh, inspect the deck. That that's my favorite number <laughs> of all time. Uh, yeah. Awesome. All right. I, so I, now- I, I, here's what I would say about deck, man. <laughs> deck ha- probably has the best Wu Tang verse of all time on. Trying <laughs> yeah, to- yeah. Oh, hands down. <laughs> Maybe hip hop too, right? One of one of them. Yeah. I argue, but. Yeah. Yeah, you're talking about uh, Triumph, right? Yep, Triumph. <laughs> yep, for sure, man. Like that song comes on, and it's like everybody knows, man. Yeah, yeah, like, for sure. When I remember buying that double disc, and and that song was like constant repeat, and oh. it, it was just man. <laughs> yeah, the music video too, as well. Yep. Okay, man. All right, I'm gonna take it back to your KRS story real quick, man. So I had here on my notes, and I'm gonna make a crazy comparison, man. Was that uh, you know when I first heard you rapping, I w- and I started getting really into your music, I was like, man, I-, I love the way that you deliver and enunciate. It's very commanding and aggressive, and uh, just just very powerful, man. And and I see that as you were talking about Karis One, I was like, man, I can see the influence now. And so uh, quite quite similar, different different voices, but I could see the influence, man, from Karis One. And so that's one thing that. I appreciate appreciate about your style. Your delivery is very like the words when you rap it. It's so super clear, man. Like I like I get it, and just I love the uh, the commanding presence that you bring when you when you spit raps, man. Thanks, bro. Appreciate it. Yeah, for sure. All right, what about uh, what about the production tip? So you mentioned RZA. Was there anybody else that you were digging? Pete Rock or DJ Premier? Any other any other guys you were fans of? Yeah, RZA, DJ Premier for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, you know, Ninth Wonder kind of told oh, yeah. you know, Ooh. when I when I really started to get exposed uh to him, there were little elements that I, I really started to pick up that Ninth Wonder would, would do in his production that I started to add him in when I was when I was producing. I was like, man, I, I love what you know Ninth does this thing or that yeah. thing. Um you know, and and I started to really study him. So, if you think about his work with Little Brother, um, the oh, listening man. and and yeah. the Minstrel Show, like I studied his production on those albums. And he, man, just I loved I loved the fact that he, in those, you know, it just he didn't feel like he was overproducing. And what I mean by that is like you know how sometimes like it just feels like producers are putting everything you know, and the kitchen sink all into the track. His, his, you know, manipulation of samples, how yeah. he would chop his samples, just, man, incredible. And then the subtle things that he would do on the track, whether it's to the percussion or how he would, you know, switch up the sample. Just, all, I mean, I, I would, you know, I would say if somebody were to really... And granted, you know, he Knight has done a ton of stuff since then, but yeah, I, I would say the <clears throat> extra show for me, man, when I listen to like, man, he put together a classic album for for them to kind of paint that picture on. Yep. The Minstrel Show is is definitely up there with some of his best work in my personal opinion. Awesome, man. All right, I'm gonna jump into one of my favorite questions for uh, everybody I interview. So, what, what what's the story behind your name, Intellect? Tell me, tell me, was it the first name you started with? Uh, uh, how it came about into in, you using? I, um, it kind of came about just as you know, you you kind of go through your you know your your goofy names as an artist yeah, yeah. at the beginning, you yeah. know, and so this name. I picked just because it was a representation of of kind of how everyone you know viewed me. I was you know I'd say I, I was always when I grew up I was kind of considered to be like you know I'm the smart kid, All and right. so you know you know as you grow up even older it's like oh you know you're intellectual, um, you know you read a lot you know your vocabulary is this or that. Uh-huh. You know, and so I just thought that it was a, a suitable name just because that was a way that a lot of people described me. Awesome. And so I was like, okay, this is cool. You know, I think this would, you know, <clears throat> really kind of reflect who I am as a person and not be something that, you know, I would say over a span of time that I would be like, uh, oh, this is kind of corny or 
yeah. or you know does it does it really represent who I am right now you know five or you know six or seven or ten years later so you know I think this this is a good name that I will you know I'll definitely stick with no I like it is there any particular reason why you do the uh, lowercase i and then all caps I like the look when you look at it when it's on print but any thought uh, on why you did that so funny story about that is I, I, <laughs> I did it. I did it number one because I wanted it to stand out, but number two, yep. because of, I wanted it to be, <laughs> this is goofy, right? <laughs> so you know how, you know how, uh, like really in, you talk about the, the early mid two thousands, the iPhones are rolling out the iPads, ah. just, you know what I oh, mean? Oh, I see. Oh yeah. man, it's catchy. Yes. Yeah, so it was like, you know, uh, I, 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 I liked how Apple was rolling their products out and doing that. And so I was like, well, let me yeah. kind of do something that's a little, that's a little different and, you know, makes it stand out. So that was kind of the inspiration. Uh, to well, be hey, man, they, they study that kind of stuff and um, it works. I am a fan of intellect music and I have an iPhone, man. Y'all got me, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. I didn't know that was the story behind it. So that's great. Yeah. Cool, man. Well, hey, well, what's the uh, what's the uh, Ohio music scene like, man? You guys have, uh, you know, a bunch of MCs uh, out of Ohio that, you know, we all love. You know, obviously, I'm, I'm a big Bone Thugs and Harmony fan, and you're not too far from Cleveland. Um, high Tech, Blueprint, Illogic, Copyright, all, all Ohio MCs. Uh, MC Brains from back in the day, too, right? I think it's from Ohio. And then y'all have a lot of uh, newer folks like Trippy Red, the baby. I think they're all from uh, Ohio too, as well. Uh, any favorite Ohio MCs that you listened to while you were growing up? Um, while I was growing up, I mean, it was definitely you know Bone Thugs. Uh, sure. They were they were huge yeah. when you know I'm gonna date myself, but <laughs> you know yeah. when I when I was in high school, like that's me so, too, man. You know, they yeah. they had their they you know their, their initial EP and then they dropped East 1999. That's right, and that was just like, you know, the initial EP, which a lot of people probably don't remember because it was really kind of flew under the radar. It had some you know a few really good solid cuts, but East 1999 was like they blew up on that. Yeah, and it was a fantastic album. Oh, you know, I remember awful. listening to a lot of that. You know, with with my homies, we would ride <clears throat> to school together listening to that album you know yeah in hindsight i'm like uh you know some some of the references i'm like uh <laughs> right 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 maybe not some of the best but right right, right. But, yeah you know in ohio now, yeah. they were yeah they, yeah in ohio they were huge though they were yeah, huge oh, and yeah. so their their influence was was major of course you know uh high tech um you know major influence i'll name a few uh christian hip-hop guys just because of okay please do. of uh you know me kind of being in that scene and so you know there's yep. guys like uh you know k drama who's been doing a lot of you know uh, christian hip-hop okay he's out of cincinnati um you know uh <clears throat> taylor gray armand wake up they're out of columbus and, you know these you know these are guys that i would say I've, I've you know gotten more familiar with over the last 10 years okay. um you know uh a guy named Cephas, he's, he's, he actually lives in California, but, you know, he, he's originally from Cleveland. And so, you know, he's out, you know, he's making music, um, and I, you know, listen to a lot of his stuff, man. He's, he's a, he's a dope, phenomenal artist. All these guys that I've mentioned are, are phenomenal artists. I'm, I know I'm probably missing a few, but yeah, um, those are, those are <clears throat> uh, some of the guys that, you know, I was, really you know really been locked into you know in this area over the last uh, 10 plus years or so yeah you get, you'll have to share me some of those links man the christian hip-hop scene is ridiculous so awesome a lot of dope yeah. mcs and i love the messaging that comes out of the songs i've got a good friend uh cross eyes that we did a song together who is yeah, also yeah. yeah in that scene too uh not not too active these days but uh he he was amazing too and all about the messaging too as well so I'm a big fan, and I'd love to learn more about some of the greats. So, yeah, shit, send those links over, man. Will do. Will do. Well, good, man. Well, hey, man, I was going to ask you uh, earlier, I think you already mentioned, man, if you had a preference between rapping and, and producing. Uh, uh, yeah, and I've heard both, and I love them both. And, uh, yeah, I feel you, man. Just, uh, hey, if, if you're good at what you do, man, go with what works, and that sounds like it does. And so do you, uh, like, uh, 
I know you mentioned you don't do it uh, too much these days, but uh, do you still at least produce for your guys on the label? Are they reaching out to you or did they just, are you guys just outsourcing the beats? Just really outsourcing. I mean, okay. I'm, I've been, most of my time is, is, is devoted to um, writing songs, you know, yep. creating songs and then doing mixing and mastering. That's been a lane for me that, that I really, <laughs> I really enjoy that even more so than production because okay. you can take, you can take all those different elements and then make them sound good. So um, that's been an ongoing theme for me. You know, if you listen to uh, my music, I do do the mixing and the mastering. Um, Clean. And yeah, and I appreciate it, appreciate it. Yeah. And I've been, it's been one of those things where I've really, really taken the steps and, and invested in trying to make the music sound uh, as excellent as I possibly can. And, you know, that's something... I don't I don't do the mixing and mastering for all the projects uh, in the yep. crew, but, you know, I I have had my hand in quite a bit. So awesome. Are, are you using Pro Tools or, or what, what platform are you using to do all that? Pro Tools. I use Pro Tools and yep. I use Studio One. Um, okay. Pro Tools is, is a lot is really just my favorite mixing environment. Okay. I use I, I move it over to Studio One to do mastering. Uh, and I, I like Studio One for a number of reasons, but it's it's really it's really nice to do uh, comparison listening. It, it's more aesthetically. It's just easier to move around and navigate. So I do my mastering over on that platform, and 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 also to uh, I I initially bought that to make beats on, and it's a fantastic environment to make beats on too. So uh, just any any young producers out there that are looking for uh, you know a platform to make some beats on, I would highly recommend Studio One because the nice. ease of use. It's so easy to use and um, you can hit the ground running even more so on that platform than jumping on like a Fruity or trying to learn how to produce on Pro Tools. Yeah. A lot of levels of complexity on other platforms that Studio One just Love like it. the ease of use is, is much, much, uh, you know, the learning curve is, is a lot less steep. Yeah. Are you are you self-taught or did you are you formally trained in mixing and mastering? Self-taught. Self-taught. I, I did Beast. a lot of I did a lot of reading. Yep. I did a lot of, a lot of hours of trial and error. I mean, yeah. you know, I pretty much just you know, <laughs> just <laughs> hunkered <laughs> down, man. Yeah. Hunker, it was one of those things I was committed to learning. And so, you know, I started, I started a, a while, you know, some years back. And, and of course, when you start something, you're not good at it. And, and I would, I would just say to anybody who, who wants to learn and whether you're learning from somebody else or you're trying to, you know, or you're being self-taught, stay at it, like yep. continue to grow, continue to progress, can, you know, take constructive criticism and and you know run with it continue to refine continue to invest and and you know you'll get better put in the work put in the I work agree. awesome man dude I, I love it as mentioned man uh your, your music is very clean so awesome man well hey, i wanted to jump into some of your music now right so i want to talk right. some of the stuff that i've been listening to and some of the older stuff that you released. And I want to start with the single that you just released uh, a couple days ago, right? Mm -hmm. So, yep, you get get your mind right. It features uh, Griffin, who I believe is also a label mate of yours, too, as well. Hey, you want to talk about making that song? I really love the hook on there, too, man. The stop chasing the light, chasing the light, chasing the hype. Oh, man. That's another thing you're really good at, too, is hook writing. So a a any, any story behind that track? Yeah, so, you know, and I'll, I'll start with saying not only this track, but uh, the, the last track that I released, The Solution, I'm actually in the process of re-releasing that original album. And so, okay. you know, when we, uh, when we first put out the original version of it back in like, I'm gonna say um, 20, 2019, um, and, you know, we wrote the song like in, you know, 2018 when we were working on it, oh, it wow. was just, you know, our way of, of really trying to tell the people, you know, coming after us that, that there is, you know, 
<clears throat> there is something better than the thing that you're chasing after. And yep. so that's the whole idea behind Gig Your Mind, right? Is the fact that all the glitz and the glam that everybody says that these are the things you have to chase after, like it's really more or less fool's goal. It's not really it. going to um, going to uh, fulfill the desires that you have in a way that, that you think that they will. And you, it'll leave you coming up empty. And so that's really the, the driving message behind that track. Well said, man. Yeah, I, re I really enjoyed that track. And uh, man, 2023, you've been on fire, man. Single after single and just projects and then putting out other guys too on the label. It's very inspiring. And so the, the last uh, single before that was uh, I'm Sorry that you released in August with Mitch Durrell and Dre Murray too as well. And uh, when I was listening to that track, it just again reminded me just uh, your presence in the Christian hip hop music scene. And so uh, I, I love how you uh, weave in uh, all that um, religious messaging. And, uh, and every time I'm listening to one of the tracks where you get really deep into it, man, I always catch myself self-reflecting and just, <laughs> oh, man, thinking about life. So, man, it's a bit, <clears throat> very, very potent, man. Any, any uh, stories behind the I'm Sorry track with your two friends? Yeah, you know, um, so it starts off with the beat. A uh, producer named Dax Hama, he's, he's another guy. He's a fantastic producer. He's a part of uh, this group called the Menace Movement. Um, a really, really dope collective in the uh, Christian hip hop scene. And, you know, I got that track from him earlier this year, along with a few other tracks. And so the, the whole idea, you know, he built that track and he had the sample called I'm Sorry in it. And so I was like, man, I want to build, I don't want to take that sample out. I want to build the track around it. Yeah. And so I didn't, and, you know, cause you know how you, you get some beats and you have a sample in there and you just kind of ignore it. I was like, I want this to be the key theme. Nice. And so what I did was I wrote a verse right away because I was very inspired by the beat. He like got the beat from, I wrote a verse right away. And then I reached out to Mitch and, and Dre Murray and I said, hey, you know, guys, you know, I want you guys on this. Um, you know, write, you know, write your verses based on what I have here. And then what I did was I, I took some uh, Billy Graham sermon clips and I kind of oh, chopped nice. them up. Uh -huh. and, and I, you know, I wanted those to be like the jump off for each of us when we were going into, uh, you know, our verse. And so it just really, it's one of those things, like you said, it's a very deep introspective track where, yeah where we were allowed to be able to to share our faith and and, and come across in a way uh be vulnerable uh you know but as yet still really coming with with that that you know that that hip-hop boom bap sound behind yeah. it uh mm -hmm. you know that comes with that 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 power and authority and so you know when it comes to who i am as an individual as an artist you know my faith is gonna going to always take precedence. And so um, that's definitely a track where where it, it, it stands out in the forefront. And, and you know, I really wanted that message to to hit home with the listeners. <clears throat> yeah, I sure did. Mission accomplished. <laughs> <laughs> hey, and then we, we talked about uh, Solution uh, a little bit. That was a song that you did with Caboose and DJ Sean P. DJ Sean P who did the cuts. And he actually, he features quite a bit on your music. And that dude is a scratch machine. Holy cow. Is that is he another Ohio head too? No, no, he's actually from Texas. So man, I got connected with him through my dude Griffin. This was, okay. you know, you're talking about maybe about 20, 2015. Ooh. Because uh, you know, back then I was talking to Griffin about, you know, <clears throat> you know, 2015, 2016. I was talking to Griffin, I was like, you know, I, I, I want to start to branch out and work with some producers. So a lot of my stuff, 2016, you know, like Sean P, he produced, you know, my, my you know, initial album Roots, what I, what I put out in 2016. And, and then um, he produced, he produced uh, most of my original version of The Solution. Yep. And he just has, he's just an incredible DJ. 
and he's not only an incredible DJ, but he's an you know incredible. Uh, he has a wealth of knowledge of hip hop, and wow. so you know when you talk about his vinyl library and his you know, I, I mean I would consider him genius level when he comes uh-huh. up with his ideas to put together the cuts because he knows, hey, you know I'll I, I would send him over a song, and then. He's, you know, I could imagine him just going through his vinyl. It's like, I know I'm going to pick this one, this one, and yes. this one, because they have the samples that are going to bring out uh, the message in this track. And so he's just, uh, man, he's phenomenal, man. Um, you know, and so when I, when I talk about going back and redoing the initial album, one of the reasons why I wanted to do that was because I feel like I'm a better mix engineer. Okay. now than I was, uh, you know, going back in, you know, uh, 2018, when I was really doing a lot of the work on it and putting it out in 2019. So, and, and what I also wanted to do was I wanted to refresh the sound. So the okay. beats are, are all new. Um, I feel like the beats are more reflective of the sound where I currently am. And so, you know, Sean P, he did a phenomenal job of, of producing those beats. I really wish that my mixes would have been better at the time, but this is a way for me to kind of rewrite history, so to speak, and (laughs) reintroduce these out, you know, this album, because it's it's definitely one of my favorite albums that I've, that, that I, you know, wrote. And I think that time for me as an artist and as a person were very important. So I wanted to recapture that time, but I wanted to kind of, you know, put it on a new canvas, so to speak. And so okay. that's the effort that I'm currently going through right now. Yeah, he he's phenomenal. I was just amazed yeah. with his work. And Caboose, man, that, that's another one, too. He, he was, oh, I mean, he spit fire on that track. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's another guy I'm going to start following, too, man. He's got, yeah. that, song, that song was great. And I look forward to the reintroduction of Solution as you work through that, man. Um, that one too was, uh, and I, I jotted down just the opening like right, the opening line of your of your verse was ridiculous, right? Give me the mic so I can school scholars, fresh bruise. I'm old school like pop collars. Oh man, <laughs> you're very commanding, and uh, again, just I told you your delivery is very punchy, and, and it was really hard asking cats about wanting soul food. I ain't serving Betty Crocker. Woo, man, <laughs> uh, line after line, a uh, great track, man. Appreciate it. Yep. Hey, man, then I want to jump into uh, your project. Before that, you released, uh, again, you mentioned his name, uh, Precise. You did an album with him uh, and released it in June. That was the Art of Grace seven-song EP. And so, uh, yeah, another dope track, Precise. I know does some of the art, right, for your for your projects. Super talented artist. But uh, do you want to talk about just the, uh, the idea as you guys were putting that album together, how that worked out? <clears throat> yeah, so the original... The original idea with the Art of Grace was was Pro just kind of hit me up. He's like, hey, man, we've been working a long time. You know, let's do something together. And yep. so and so <clears throat> it, that's kind of how it started. And so this is another album <clears throat> where we had di- put out an original work and then we decided, hey, let's revamp this because uh, when we released it, it was kind of like we just, you know, him and I were we, you know, I was doing some, some other work, uh, on, on music. I was working on other projects. He had other things going on. And so we didn't really kind of roll out the original version the correct way. So him and I, we got to talking about it last year and he was, you know, we were like, well, let's, let's, you know, since we're doing this polystyro music thing together, let's go ahead and re-release this album. And so that's what we did. And oh, wow. there, was some, there was some rewriting, there was some <clears throat> changing of some of the beats. Um, I did, you know, I remixed everything, you know, new mastering the whole nine um, and polished it up. And, and it, you know, it just turned out phenomenal. So yeah, we, <laughs> you know, Pro and I, we just have, I mean, we just really connect <clears throat> well on the track. I think we complement one another very, very well uh, yep. stylistically. Um, you know, sonically, I think we really, really sound good together. And that that album just really kind of solidifies that. And, you know, uh, Pro, you know, and I just, between the picking up the, the ideas 
and and then just the imagery we wanted we wanted to have a certain image we, you know the art of grace and you know there's a song amazing grace which is really kind of like the cornerstone of the message you know we wanted we wanted to to have that theme front central so you know when we released the the singles we wanted to kind of have that that picture frame imagery that that really kind of like what are these guys leading up to yeah. you know for those who hadn't heard the original version because the original version when it was put out it was you know i'd say it, it really flew under the radar but this version that we released this year uh has been you know very well received and and we've gotten a lot of great feedback and so yep. um him and i we've already <clears throat> been talking about selecting beats and and uh you know maybe doing some uh, running them back in 2024 so nice um, you know be on the lookout I know, but we'll definitely have stuff where we'll be on tracks i already have them working on something for me yeah uh, you know to to drop some time in 2024 so we'll definitely have some more uh with both of us on it together yeah my, my favorite song on the track was uh for the culture i think that beat was by tc not a super hard beat uh it's precise from ohio too is everybody on the label from ohio everybody's from all over man. all over so okay get it from all over pro is from denver oh Jeff shoot. james is from sacramento Oh man, um, okay. You know, Rich is uh he's in Detroit, Dex is in Detroit, um uh uh Caboose, he's he's up in the Minneapolis area. And so uh actually I want to say not Minneapolis, he's northern Minnesota. Uh, okay. so he's yeah, he's yeah, he, <laughs> he's yeah. he's you know, everybody's scattered everywhere, man. So yeah. Um, you got to spread you know, on the on the country. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then we, you know, we connect and, you know, we, we talk, you know, either phone or text or, or group chat. And so we, we stay up, we stay connected. So. Yeah. I, I love it, man. The family aspect through all that thing. Uh, and so uh, before that uh, you released uh, the mandate album in May, nine tracks and uh, man, that album blew me away. That, that was an amazing project. Started off with the the mandate, which was the uh, title track, right? And I thought uh, first song, uh, just home run, knocked it out of the park. And I thought it set the tone for the album. It was just uh, the message was quite clear. And then uh, this was the point, or at least the part of the interview where I was going to bring up just your beat selection and the way that you 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 put your songs and arrange them. Like I, I like it; it flows really well. So you got a real talent for that too, as well. Uh, the song that I really enjoyed <clears throat> was uh, Make Away. Uh, so that was the, you, know, you mentioned about first verse, just talking about raising your kids, making a way for them to make, trying to find a way for them to blossom and just succeed and just, you know, you being a dad. And uh, and you want to talk to us just about uh, the idea behind the album, how you put that together, how it came about? I would say that <clears throat> album for me is, is me... Uh, really kind of embracing the whole idea because there there was a part of me you know I went through a stretch where I didn't I didn't want to I kind of wanted to give up on music I kind of wanted oh. to invest my time <clears throat> invest my energy uh into something else and wow. that that album is really kind of birthed out of coming to the conclusion that this is something that that God wanted me to do yeah. And so you you hear in a song like the mandate, like like the whole idea of me wrestling with with uh, you know doing this, but understanding that that it's it's needed. It's needed for for me personally, but it's needed for other people to yeah. hear. And then you know, along with that, you know, you have a song like Last Days, where I'm kind of just really telling a story about the current landscape, about how things look around us right now and you know how we need to come to grips with it and 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 really um you know turn to god and so you know i would say that album there is uh a level of vulnerability for me as a as a person okay you know um where you know you'll get you'll get nuggets of that like like in the mandate or or make a way and you know, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of bringing my hard 
boom bap style with it but um you get to connect with me in 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 a in a different way on that project and so you know for me that was like that time that time you know writing and and doing you know putting together uh that album was i would say it was it was very very important for for me as a, as an artist as, and as a person because uh it was it was like no looking back so yeah, yeah that was uh yeah it was a very uh very strong album that that had a lot of messaging too man and i could see that just you connecting with the uh, the folks through those songs like uh, especially through that wake up song and so it was uh, like you mentioned man you got uh, all these disturbances and uh, and you mentioned like the light beams to help me see through the smoke screen that was like i was like oh man all these deep lines man and just uh <laughs> and then the hook too right live i got my brights on them let's go um, just again, you know, hey, fighting, fighting through all the, uh, you know, all all these dis uh, disturbances, man. And, and then the cover of the album too, you know, was the the picture of you. So, yeah, I, mean, I thought it was a good statement of who Intellect is. Really dope album. Yeah. So it, it's funny you mentioned the cover because for for a while I kind of purposely not put myself on on album covers. Sure. Uh, you know, outside of I, you know, I kind of had a mock-up done for uh, this. Uh, really, I would say like small EP called Ephesians Remixes that I did with a, um, a fellow producer uh, uh, or uh, another producer. His name is I Am Lin Flo. He's another dope producer. He's from the South. He's he's really good too. Um, where we did a, a little bit of a collaborative project focused on the Book of Ephesians. Okay. But outside of that, I really, per, you know, <clears throat> went away from the whole idea of putting myself on the cover. And so I did that purposely because I wanted, you know, it was a way for people to, it's like this, this album, you know, there's, there's me you're seeing in this album and, and, and who, you know, my thought process and how I had to work through things. So that was purposely done uh, for, okay. for me to be on, on, you know, the, the quote unquote face on the album. Nice. That's interesting, man. I, I think I, I, I wrestle with the same problem too, where, you know, I never put myself on the cover, but actually uh, funny that you mentioned that too, because the next project, I, I have a picture of myself too on it. So going through the, <laughs> the first nice, one nice. Took me some time. <laughs> well, hey, uh, I'm gonna take it back a couple years, and then I want to talk about Polished Arrows was uh, where I got the full introduction to intellect. I met you uh, a little bit before that, but um, Polished Arrows. I remember I, I, you know, I picked up the album. I got the shirt too. I rocked that, rocked that thing. But that's where, um, you know, I was uh, introduced to uh, to your music and then blast off the lead track. Yo, I think I'm ready to blast off, man. Just these, these songs, man, you open the albums up with, man. Just oh, so always so perfect, man. They, they set the tone. And uh, as I revisited uh, all these albums, man, I mentioned that, you know, again, I'm a big fan of the way that you arrange it and very punchy. And so I wanted to talk about uh, the Polished Arrows track, the second track and title of the album. Um, what was uh, the story behind the theme of that project? Can you talk to me about that? So, so that that whole idea, it really kind of it goes way, way back. It goes way, way back. It goes. You're talking about I'm I'm in high school. My dude uh, Philip Anthony, who is on the track, he's a lifelong friend as well, mm -hmm. um, and you know it goes back to our time in youth group. And so that was okay. kind of like the name of the youth group. And so it was kind of like when I, when I took that name, it was kind of like taking on and extending that legacy of, 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 you know, learning the foundational things of the faith at that point in time in my life, you know, being like a 16, 17 yep. year old kid when I was, you know, first introduced to it and, and uh, also, you know, spending some time being a youth leader there. So it was taking what I learned and then extending it and knowing that, hey, it was that firm foundation of faith that 
I could build on and then I can just kind of continue to build on it. So, you know, yeah. the polished arrow, the whole idea, um, I wanted, I wanted to do, I wanted, I wanted that album to just kind of speak to the fact that, that this is still going, this is still moving. Cause I did that album right after the solution. Yeah. And I really wanted to, I really wanted to, uh, kind of give a different sound. So you, you, the album definitely sounds different from the original version of the solution. Okay. And it was me branching out purposefully, uh, branching out. And, um, I wanted, I wanted to, I wanted at yet and still, I was, I would say I was branching out, but yet and still looking to find my lane in even a better way than I did in the last album. So I was still trying to refine myself as an artist, my style. And that was a way to me to, you know, hey, I want to step in this way. Let's let's see how this this works. And there's a lot of great songs on there that I love oh, how they came for, out. For sure. Yeah, I think my favorite song on there was All Day. Uh, that was closer to the end. But just again, the uh, the lyrics, man, you always get me on the lyrics. And, uh, you know, <laughs> I get, always catch me at the end. I'm like thinking about life and <laughs> thinking about I'm like, man, he got, he got me again. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was a dope project. And hey, man, uh, and so uh, I also want to just bring up, man, I've had the honor of uh, being able to do a couple songs with you. We've done uh, three tracks together. And as mentioned, the first time I heard your music, I was like, dude, I got to do music with this guy. He, he's amazing. And we did uh, that first track uh, called Cyclops with my friend uh, Profound who produced that track. And then we, we decided we were going to release it maxi single style, right, and do a remix. Yep. And so we did, which both are equally dope. So one profound uh, Southern California producer and MC, and then Remshot, who is a long, long time friend for me, who did the remix, and then uh, Precise did the cover, right? So I think he did the, uh, yep. the Cyclops, and and I like how you added the uh, the just the plastic uh, plastic wrapper effect on it. But yeah, yeah that was a, that was a great song, man. Uh, really good reception, and then uh, and then later on we connected with. Uh, with Cross Eyes, who I brought up earlier during the interview, and we did the Truth Music song, just a song about commercial music and its cliche messaging. That was super fun too. Both tracks that we released, and uh, and and then I have a third song that uh, is still in the vault, and I have some mixtape that I'm gonna eventually re uh, release. But I, I don't even know if you remember it, but it was uh, we were talking about just old school '90s stuff, and so so. Oh I, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Yep. I, I, I remember. I forgot about this song, and so. That's a super dope song, man. Yeah, it, it's it's been dope, man. I, you know, that that truth music cut just like that song really, really, really clicked with me, man. I think what yep. all three of us brought to that, yeah. Um, you know, and that was my first introduction to Cross Eyes too. Uh, yeah, yeah. Another, you, he, he's 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 really dope. I wish he made more music. I know he's I not know. really into it right now, but I know. Um, you know that that you know giving messages like that really resonate to me because uh you really you really see when you observe the landscape around you that people aren't getting it yeah. and so it's another way to kind of you know shoot that arrow in the you know in the air and say hey guys you know this you know what you guys are consuming is 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 not you know this isn't gonna gonna you know yield the results it's you know it's it's really kind of mind numbing in a way so we're here to present something that that is thought provoking that that makes you think about things a little bit deeper yeah yeah that was that was a great track and uh, i love all the music we do and then uh, as you mentioned right like uh just the different people you work with the the different versions of intellect that it brings out and so again when i connect with you the different version of MEMP that it brings out. I love it. And I'm, I'm a fan of your work. And uh, I look forward to continue working with you again in the future. Oh, for sure. For sure. All right. Well, hey, man, I wanted to jump into the label. You talked about it already, you know, uh, and you mentioned, uh, you know, who was on the roster. But do you want to talk to me about the motivation of actually putting this label or team together? You know, I know you worked with a lot of these guys over the years. I've seen the names. And so what, what kind of lead? What 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 uh, sparked it and said, "Hey man, I'm gonna do polish arrow music and start getting folks together." What was the story behind that? 
I, I would I would say it, it it really wasn't something that I intended to do. Um, okay, you know, it it just kind of started out last year, mm -hmm. where more precise and just James had reached out to me and said, "Hey, um, you know, both of them they hadn't released music. It, it had been a little bit of while, you know, been a while since they released music. Okay, and they they reached out to me and said, "Hey, <clears throat> we love what you're doing. Um, you know." Like we kind of want to come under the umbrella of what you're doing. Sweet. And so you know, I was like, "Well, oh, this is dope." And so, let's figure out a plan. And so, what we did a lot last year was just try to plan on how we would make things work. Because you know, I wanted to, I wanted to kind of set those guys up and, and myself too. You know, because I felt like, at least to a certain extent, I was really finding my groove as an artist you know last year i released an album called living weapons okay and i you know that album like man i felt like i was just in my lane in that album yeah. and that album <laughs> too had a great combination of different features on it and i <laughs> in a joking way i kind of you know uh kind of say to myself it's my my way of of uh you know, doing a Wu Tang album, so to speak. Ah, uh, sure. Because, <laughs> because of the vibe and and some of the elements on it. So if you listen to that album, you'll you may you'll you'll pick it up. But, you know, it was, you know, those guys saw me working on that album and putting it out, and and it's like, okay, let's let's put together a plan, you know, to to release some music. And you know, I can help you guys to 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 get things organized. You know, help out with the mixing and the mastering. And you know, let's let's you know let's plan this thing out. So that's what we did. Is we started to plan, and then we started to roll things out. End of you know towards the end of last year. Yeah. And we kind of you know so it was, it was a combination of let's let's get some things in the pipeline and you know let's strategically do some things I love it. that that will guarantee success i mean like say for instance it's some of the simple things that a lot of artists don't think about it's like okay um you know hey you're submitting music to websites and blogs yeah why don't you get a purchase or, or a press release done why don't you get a press release done sure and so those are things that i've been doing for years that those yeah. guys hadn't been doing so okay let's 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 uh let's uh put together a structure to ensure you get your press release done and so i have a person that does that and he continues Man. to do that for us this day and then um it came uh, you know down to another strategic thing is looking at how spotify and the other digital platforms work yep and and how you need to keep how those platforms function in mind to uh really work them in a way to guarantee your success yeah and so you know you, you look at how music is today versus how it was way back in the day you could release a single and then drop an album right after we can't do that these days because yeah. of how the algorithm functions um you know really wants you to to more often feed, feed it, yeah. music. and i'm not saying you necessarily have to be a slave to the algorithm but it's a way that you can use it to manipulate it in a way to work for you to get more yeah. eyes and ears on your music and so you know those type of things we were discussing and working into the background and then you kind of saw 2023 throughout that's been kind of the strategy of executing you know we've been executing that strategy yeah and so um that's what it's it how it started then okay. you know dex saw how we were doing things and then we you know he's like hey you know uh you know i want to be a part of what you're doing and so he he connected with us in you know february okay and we plugged him in and um, you know, Dex, he's a former member of the regiment, um, you know, on Raucous Records. So he, you know, he's, he goes way back um, as far as, you know, uh, the hip hop game. And then yeah. just recently, you know, Caboose and Rich, who've been at it over the last uh, month, uh, Caboose, you know, uh, Christian hip hop veteran is 
done some, you know, uh, man, been in the hip hop scene for a long time, you know, was was an MC that was featured in the source, has done, you know, done a track with Royce to five nine. Oh. Um, you know, like <clears throat> just, you know, you know, veteran and and then Rich Cologne, you know, formerly of uh, a Christian hip hop group called Flight School that was very, very popular, very big, making a lot of waves and Ooh. and you know, Rich, uh, you know. Uh, linking up with us has an incredible boom bap sound and, and style to to what he does, and so you know, um, it's just kind of grown. It, it, you know, really to make you know sum it all up, it, it's not something that I would say I purposely, you know, looked to do, but it just kind of organically grew, and That's great. people just kind of got attracted to what we were doing, and so um, it's exciting. Uh, because it's it you know everybody's really seeing growth and really progressing and and so you know that that really validates that you know our efforts as a collective. Yeah, I, I like it too. And it was uh, you know as I followed uh, you know your career in music, you know I, I saw it. You're very strong in terms of like uh, putting your stuff together. And then I saw the the gradual shift in in, in putting the label together, and it was you know one two three mcs and then it's starting to starting to build up into a powerful wave and so i so i love that and and you're and you're right man you got to find a way to beat the machine and, and feed the algorithm and i think you can beat that uh collectively right yeah i think you can do it under the polished arrow it's very impossible to keep up for one mc and i think the way that you guys are doing is the right way too right so you guys you know you keep putting stuff out under the stamp and you keep it uh, you keep it flowing. It ties everybody in. Everybody stays on the ride. And I, and I love the family atmosphere that you're building with this team. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, man. It takes, uh, uh, you know, it takes a strong person to orchestrate all this stuff. And so I, I see you guys putting in the work. And, uh, yeah, a lot, a lot of things you got to think about, man. Like you mentioned, the press release and just – the coordination and the strategizing of what releases are coming out. So I applaud you guys for doing that. That's why. Yeah. Hey man. So what does uh, intellect like to do for fun, man, when he's not making music or working and doing label stuff? <laughs> you know, so, uh, you know, I like to, I, I read a lot, you know, um, of course, me being a Christian, you know, I, I do, I, you know, I love digging into theology, you know, so I like to read, um, uh, you know, video games, of course, with my kids and, you know, I got two, two sons. And so, you know, we'll, we'll bust out Mortal Kombat here and there and, uh -huh. and battle, you know, or, or hop on Matt. And um, I'm also too, man, I'm, you know, an avid comic collector mostly yep. older vintage stuff so you know that's been my thing you know between uh you know comic collecting and toy collecting so you know i got i got some older stuff here you know some vintage x-men that are sitting on my desk here yep. uh that here here let me let me grab one so i kind of kind of show you i, I love uh, it dude. stuff i <laughs> you know what i'm saying so like this oh. is you know, I, Old Whoa. school, old school. This is like uh, issue twenty-seven. So, man, you know, you know, I I got a couple local uh, comic shops. You know, I'd say local one here and one, you know, one in the Cleveland area that I kind of hit up. That holy cow, uh, you know, they they know I'm what I'm into, so they they kind of help me out and find help me find some gems. So, yeah, I did you know comics? Have, I've I've been collecting comics off and on since I was probably. A, I don't know, maybe 10 years old. Yeah. Um, you know, the the newer stuff I really don't buy. I really don't buy new issues and stuff. What like all I all I buy now is, is mostly vintage because those are the okay. stories that I like the most. So yeah, and so I yeah, I see a lot of the toys displayed too. And so I'm a I'm a big comic guy. I don't I don't collect these days, but I still I still buy the toys, right? So yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> yep. I just I just love that stuff, man. Uh, I've transitioned then to some more like uh, music type figures, but yeah, I love it. And I love looking at that and uh, I'll never hesitate to walk into a comic book shop and I still got my cards. And so what I did notice though, when I'm looking at your stuff is that it's all Marvel. Are you strictly Marvel guy? Are you, are you open? I've, 
What I'm mostly Marvel. Missy, man. <laughs> I'm 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 mostly Marvel and it's yeah. and I think a lot of it is because of so my older brother he collected comics and all he ever collected was Marvel. So uh-huh. when I you know I I would what I would do is I would sneak his comics and I would <laughs> I would actually I actually never read them at first. I used to just draw the pictures because I was really when I was younger I was really big in the art. So uh-huh. I would just take his comic books and I would just draw the pictures out of the books. Okay. And then I went to start to buy the books and I started reading the, the stories and I liked the story so much. And so, you know, there were, you know, the X, X-Men was one of the first comics that I ever bought. And, and then I started to buy Thor and Captain America. And then those were just the comics that I just kind of like, I just liked. Yeah. And so I think it was just more or less my brother's influence, yeah. you know, those were the things he liked and, you know, want to be like your older brother so you know yeah like the older you know like the things that you know he was into and so it was just like i never got that exposure to dc early on okay and 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 so when i started reading the stories and even though i will say i have some dc comics i just <laughs> like i like the characters better yeah yeah and, and, just, you know, and so enough. you know i guess you know, <laughs> personal bias i mean i think that you know some characters are great you know, i think batman is great yeah you know, Superman I always felt like he was too overpowered but you know I like the whole <laughs> you know the whole uh you know the whole idea you know uh, Justice League and you know all that you know I think it's cool but it's just I don't know man I make my marvel man <laughs> <laughs> Oh that's hilarious and I think uh, I think I saw like do you have an Iron Man mask too I, I thought maybe like in your early uh, days. so yeah yeah so I have uh it's it's a uh, Iron Man war machine or it's a Punisher war machine mask. That's that's what so I thought. I remember. Yeah, it's yeah, it stems from a storyline which I don't have the comics, but I you know I I bought the the helmet itself because it looks so dope. It's super and you know Punisher, yeah, Punisher uh, for a stretch. You know he was wearing the the Iron Man arm, you know the war machine armor, and so he you know painted his skull on on the the helmet and and on the the breastplate of the arm you know the armor and so i was like i saw it at the store one day you know just at at a local GameStop, and i was like dude that is incredible that looks dope yeah and you know so i would see it every so often and then it went on a ridiculous sale i was like i'm buying it (laughs) there you go man i'm kind of waiting for the uh captain america shield to go on a crazy sale man and i and i want that shield for my room (laughs) I will say this, man. I've seen it in store. That thing is beautiful, man. I mean, that, <laughs> yeah. That's that. That's a collector's piece. I definitely want to get. Yeah, it's something too, man. Um, that I really appreciate that I've seen today. So I used to be, well, I am still a big fan of Todd McFarlane's art, and then Jim Lee's art too, as well. Who were big, uh, you know, Marvel guys, and so it's cool that they're doing DC stuff now, man. Like I know McFarlane is making. Um, uh, DC toys. And then, uh, I think Jim Lee is like the president of DC right now. And so, yeah, that, that was pretty exciting for me as a comic book fan. Cool. Well, Hey, well, dope, man. Hey, so with that, what do you, what are you currently working on, man? What, any special projects you want to highlight for the folks listening in? So, you know, my revamp of the solution album, it's all done. Um, and so I'm going to release a few more singles, uh, for the rest of the year. And then I'm going to drop that album in January. Uh, so, you know, that's kind of, you know, done for me. And, you know, I'm doing some mix work for a few guys in the crew and, okay. you know, feature verses uh, that, that I'm, I'm working on for those guys. So I've uh, been kind of working on those in the background. Um, and so, you know, just been excited about that myself and caboose we've been talking about uh planning a joint project together uh you nice. know, early planning stages he's he's picked out some tracks uh same thing with me and pro um okay. you know looking at the same type of thing already i think we've, we've already selected some beats so you know those things are in the pipeline um also too um i'm going to do the same thing i did uh to the solution i'm going to do to my roots album 
And so that's been something nice. I've been working on too, because I wanted to, you know, uh, give that album new life. And, you know, the one reason why I've kind of done that to these, you know, these last couple albums is, you know, I wanted, I wanted there to be, you know, you think of yourself as an artist and, and, you know, the mark you've made on the world. And, and I wanted to go back to those, you know, those albums, I wanted to make them better. I wanted people to, to really enjoy the things that I had to say, the mixing is improved, the beats, uh, you know, fit better with my style currently. And I think that people are going to be excited about um, hearing those in a new and fresh way. And also too reintroducing people to those, but also connecting new fans uh, to those projects who, you know, um, you know, haven't heard them before. So. Nice, man. And so uh, if you, uh, if, if folks wanted to find more of your music or the polished arrow music's, uh, um, music ensembles crew. Where, where's the best place to find your music at? So you know, um, it would start. So we have a website, Polished Arrow Music. Dot Substack. Dot com. Uh, we're on the Substack platform where okay. you can connect with all of us artists. Uh, all of us are on Instagram. Um, uh, I think most of the guys are on Twitter. I'm not on Twitter, but you can find me on Instagram at intellect underscore 419. Uh, you know, I'm always posting updates of music. You know, I have links to um, my different projects on Instagram. Uh, so you can connect with me there. You can connect with me on Facebook as well. Um, you know, facebook.com slash intellect uh, three, the letter N, the number one. Um, you know, so I'm, I'm, I'm in those spaces. My music, of course, is on YouTube, it's on Spotify, and, you know, uh, Apple Music, you know, Amazon Music, all the digital platforms, my music is there. You know, you just type in uh, intellect, you'll see the lowercase i, uh, all caps, uh, uh, the rest, and you will be able to uh, connect with me. My music is out there, you know, I, I really purposely been trying to build up my discography because I really wanted uh, want there to be a lot for people to connect with and enjoy. Awesome, man. Well, hey, brother, I wanted to thank you again for your time. It was awesome getting to know you and uh, doing a deep dive into your history, what you guys are working on, and I'm very excited to follow all the future music that you're going to be doing, Polish Arrow is going to be doing, so really appreciate it. Very excited to share your story with us. Uh, with the folks out there. Any final words, man, uh, before we wrap this thing up? Uh, Memph, I just want to say, man, I appreciate you for uh, hitting me up uh, this week to do this, man. I mean, it's a long time coming. Uh, yep. Just glad to connect with you, man. I you know, appreciate you. Um, dude, I, hey, I, I see your post, man, and I, I, I'm jealous because you know, I used to travel the world like that, man, and and uh, you're doing it right now, and you're getting you're you're able to see so much. Uh, so uh, just man, enjoy it. Uh, enjoy seeing what, what so many in the states really need to see and experience. You know, other cultures, and see how the world uh, uh, lives, and you know, uh, it would really give people a better perspective on how things are. Uh, when it comes to uh, how good we have it in the United States. So, um, mm. you know, I would just say like, man, bro, I appreciate you. Thank you for having me on. And, and also for the people who are listening, I'm glad that, that I was able to share my story and connect with you all and, and hope you guys uh, connect with me and, and, you know, come along for the ride. Yes, sir. Indeed. Hey, you guys always have an open invite to come visit us in Hawaii, man. Come get oh, that man. family over here Hawaii, and we'll take y'all out. Hawaii, man, it is definitely on the bucket list, bro. Let's, let's make it happen. Hawaii, well, thanks yep. again, man. All right, appreciate you, bro.